Destruction Tractor Power, featuring the all-stars of TNT's All-American Pulling Series. We're in the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia for Trucks and Tractor Power here on the National Network. Hi, I'm Gary Lee along with Rich Hooser. And Rich, normally this is the home of the Atlanta Hawks, but there's no basketball court out there, only tons and tons of red Georgia clay. That's right, Gary, and the reason for that is we have 7,200-pound multiple engine tractors running here tonight, a lot of horsepower and a lot of stiff competition. One advantage for the spectators to be indoors is we don't have to fight with Mother Nature. Now, here in Atlanta, realistically, it's very cold. These are pitted outside. Will that affect the performance? As a matter of fact, it will, Gary. These vehicles have to be warmed up to a certain temperature to run, to run right especially these ones that are running on alcohol, and if this alcohol is not heated at the proper temperature, it's not going to run right in that engine. The entrance to underground Atlanta, a bit nippy for a carriage ride, but it's nice and toasty warm inside the Omni. We are ready for tractor pulling action. This is the 7,200 pound modified tractors. A full pull, 190 feet, 10 pullers in all, and the sled, the decision maker. And the test pull will be performed by Pat Friels out of Island, Kentucky, driving the Dollar Devil. Now, obviously, Rich Hooser, the driver that has the test pull, has the option of taking it or coming back and pulling again. Exactly, Gary. The first puller on these tracks, especially when they bring them indoors, has a slight disadvantage being first because they're not sure what this dirt is going to do. So he'll either take this pull, drop to second or even third, and possibly all the way to last place, whichever he prefers. Ron Hickson, who is in charge of the decision maker, will also determine whether he should add more weight to the sled. Exactly. We'll see that after this run. Once again, this is a test pull for Pat Freeld and the Dollar Devil. And he goes 181.74. Not a bad pull, but again, he'll have the option not bad at all, and it's real close to the full pull mark. I think they're probably going to leave the sled the way it is, so it's up to him whether or not he wants to keep that pull or drop it. I think he'll keep it. Four engines, two mounted transversely, and he goes 181.74. We'll see if Pat Friel decides to sit on that one or come back and pull again. Well, Gary, Pat has decided to keep that pull, and right now he's down with Army. All right, Pat, a 181.74. Looks good. The track looks good this afternoon. I'm going to ask you an unrelated question. Why does your tractor sound like it does? It sounds different than any tractor in this sport. Okay. Uh, angle cams out of California, I have to give them the credit for that. Uh, I like the way the tractor sounds. The crowd can relate with it. When people hear that tractor doing that, whoa, 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 they know it's Pat Friel. It doesn't hurt the performance of the tractor at all? Probably not. Maybe a little on the bottom end, but I run the barrel valve just a little leaner. That's just my thing in tractor pulling. I like it, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Mike Piper up next out of Mount Vernon, Illinois, and he drives a tractor called Just Add Dirt. Well, we have. We put the dirt inside the Omni here in Atlanta. This will be our second pull in the 7200 modified tractors. And Gary, his wife is his crew chief on the road all the time with this vehicle, and she pitches in and does half the work right along with him. Well, you can see he has three Arius engines, so he can really crank out the horsepower. He may need all of it to pull this sled 190 feet inside, but there is the distance to beat the run of Pat Friel's 181.74. front end he's going to come up short perhaps too little weight on the front yeah he was a little light on the front end but it was also veering off to the left side a whole lot which means he has to hit that right brake and when you do that it's going to slow you down because when the front ends up in the air in these vehicles you can't steer them so what they have is individual brakes that they operate with their feet to steer the vehicle actually putting some brake to the right or the left side whichever way they need to go well, Mike certainly cannot be happy with that pull of 163.62. Let's go down and talk with Mike. He's with Army Armstrong. Mike, are we looking at the classic situation of a guy just flat and missing the weight? Missed something, didn't I? I'm not sure just what it was. The tractor just didn't want to come out. And when I did, when it did hit, it lifted real hard, and I'm sure that threw me, threw my weight off a bunch, and I just couldn't get a good drive out of it that way. 
Up next is Jim Brockman, New Haven, Indiana, in the Kodiak. He has Arius power. However, only two of those three engines are running. Right, and that will cause a problem to him because you need at least three engines on these vehicles. Now, they are limited to cubic inches, but they can put as many engines on them as they want. Now, you've seen some of these other guys running four, and they could do without one, but not Jim. Well, he only has power from two engines, and he is going to come up very, very short. Only 114.47. So the engine really hurt him. It sure did. It didn't help at all at the very beginning because you can see he's just sitting there spinning. He's not getting no traction at all. And of course, with the lack of horsepower, it just ruins it halfway down the track. And he pretty much just let out of it. Well, Jim Brockman now is with Army Armstrong. Jim Brockman, sometimes you get the bear and sometimes the bear gets you. The word we get, you tried it with just two engines. That's right, we had a clutch that's fried in the left-hand motor. That's been our problem for the last little while. And, you know, when they're making so much noise and so many things are happening, you just can't always tell. This morning, uh, just before pull time, we fired them up, ran each one individually, and that's when we found the problem. Too late to fix it for today, but we'll be back for next weekend. Chevy Power providing the horses for John Carlton, the Virginia farmer, out of Little Plymouth, Virginia. Now, once again, he needs to better the 181.74 run turned in earlier by Mike Piper. John's checking his hook and make sure that they got everything hooked up and he gets it nice and tight. You don't want any slack in that chain when you take off. Two engines crank to crank, two transversely mounted. Gets the front end up just a little bit, has to get on the brakes. Oh, he won't be too happy with this one. No, not good at all, Gary. He's having problems with that left rear engine, a lot of oil and raw fuel coming out that exhaust, and a lot of blow by out of the valve curve. He shuts it off immediately. But let's see if we can catch this on the replay where he was getting real close out of bounds. He starts off good. He's going nice and straight. He's pretty well in the middle of the track. As you can see right there, he's starting to have some blow by off of that engine right away. But look how close he gets to the left-hand side. He's got to hit that right brake. And when he did, his front end came down and it really slung him off to the right-hand side, and that was it. Only 158.37 for the Virginia farmer, John Carlton. So now Pat Friels continues to lead the Dollar Devil, 181.7. Then it's Mike Piper and John Carlton. More coming your way from the Omni on Trucks and Tractor Power. It's Big Mal versus Big Ron in an FA Cup special. The Atlanta skyline on a sunny but cool day, but the action is hot inside the Omni as we continue with 7,200-pound modified tractor action. Four big Chevrolet engines. This is Freddie Freeman out of Wadesville, Indiana, the mean misreader. These are 454 cubic inch engines, and they can crank out about 4,000 horsepower. And he's going to need every bit of that horsepower to make this 190 feet full pull. And, of course, he's nicknamed Fast Freddy Freeman, and you'll see why in just a minute. Well, the 40-year-old Fast Freddy needs a pull of better than 181.74 to take the lead. It's looking good down here, Gary. Oh, it's real close. I, I'm not really sure. Let's check it out. It is so close to the full pull. We'll wait for the official announcement. Freddie Freeman. Let's look at it again on replay here. He started off real good. Look at the tire speed he has at the very beginning. Now, that's one thing he likes to do is get them tires going fast. A lot of these guys will take it out easy, but not fast Freddie. He wants all that horsepower right away. And it looks like it might have paid off because he is definitely in the lead, but I'm not sure if it's a full pull. Now we're still waiting for the official word. It and is. there it is, a full pull, 190 feet. And I'll tell you, Rich Hooser, he is going to be tough to beat today. Fred Freeman, that pull is what this sport is all about, and that was beautiful. Yes, Army, thank you. That was a real nice run. Uh, I sat down there and talked with my coach, Mike Stowe, and him and I decided we need to put enough weight on the front to keep the front end down, and the tractor lift is just perfect, and I couldn't ask for a better run. You know, you made the good run, you talked to your coach, but you know what's going on behind us right now. Everybody's doing the same thing that you did. Are you going to be able to hang on and win it, or is there somebody else going to get out of here? 
I don't know. Uh, Tim Engler, he's, he's been back there watching me, so I'm sure he knows what to do by now. But the only difference is he's got a lot different car speed than I do, and it may not work as well for this particular track. Good luck. Everybody's pulling for you. Thank you, Army. Let's go on down the track now to Rich Hooser. Okay, Gary, I got his coach right here. Mike, Fred Freeman said you coached him a little bit. Did, what did you do to help him get that full pull? Well, we've been playing with weights and air pressure and various things. I don't want to let everybody know what we're doing because maybe we're on a hot tip for one of these tracks that wants to pull you all the way across like this. I don't know, we've been playing for a while. Fred and I are good friends. He helps me with the two-wheeler and I try to help him with the tractor. So a little combination between the two-wheel drive class and the tractor class, they have a lot, a lot in common, right? Yeah, they really do. Really, a two-wheeler is only a single engine modified with smaller tires. And Fred and I have been great friends for a long time. When I go north, I stay with Fred. When he comes south, he stays with me when he can. Okay, well, good luck to you both. Thank you, we appreciate it. We want to see if we can't get Freddie a win here today. All right. Well, here's a guy that could also do it, Paul Norman. This is the War Wagon out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Again, area's power, a lot of horsepower, but he will need a full pull to go into a pull-off. The man who always wears the black cowboy hat and the black driving suit, the War Wagon, Paul Norman. It's a good look at his engines right there, a lot of horsepower. This is a beautiful track. Just a bit, he's gonna be close. Oh! I think he's a little shy, Gary, but not by much. 188.78, just over a foot short. So once again, Paul Norman comes up short. Freddie Freeman remains on top with that full pull. He was right at the beginning, he didn't get enough traction he needed. As you notice, he was doing a lot of slipping and sliding, and that cost him the distance that he needed for that full pull. Well, that's good enough for second place down the standings, but not good enough for Paul Norman, who is down with Army Armstrong. Paul Norman, it looks like you and your crew chief tried something different, setting a sled on the opposite side of the track of everybody. Is that the theory behind it? That was uh, track pulling everybody real hard over here to the left. We were gonna try to run the right sideline. I don't think that would've worked, so we, were gonna, we tried to go to the left and shoot it back across the track. We got caught up in somebody's track and it still snatched us back to the left, so it didn't really work. Is there any good track left out there at all right now? I don't think so. Well, that's a good message for Freddie Freeman who has the full pull as we take a look at the Powell pulling tractor. Out of North Carolina, this is John Powell. He used the 557 cubic inch Keith Black racing engine. And he's pretty much lined up right in the middle there. He didn't want to get over to that far right-hand side like Norman did, so let's see how he works out. Once again, he will need a full pull to continue on in competition. He will fall very short. About 168, yes, 168.32, so not even close to what John Powell needed to continue on in competition here at the Omni. It wasn't a very good run at all. As a matter of fact, he was a little farther to the left-hand side than in the middle, and that could have hurt him because there's a lot of loose dirt down here in the beginning of the track, Gary. Well, he had the horsepower, but simply could not get it hooked up in a very short run for John Powell. And the veteran of 13 years on the circuit will go back to North Carolina empty-handed, but he walks over to talk to Army Armstrong. Well, John Powell, it's amazing how much tagging that brake could just kill you on a run like this. It looked great. Man, when you tag that left brake, it all went away. Yeah, it really did, Army. The track really fooled us the whole weekend here. We just couldn't get it all together. How come everybody's been either, either drifting to the left and then all of a sudden they'll overcompensate and go to the right? It just nobody's been able to really get a handle on this thing. This track's really been funny the whole weekend. They've had a lot of moisture in it. and. Uh, if that ain't it, I don't know. We've uh, experimented with the air pressure up and down. Uh, we just couldn't get a handle on it. The next driver to take a stab at Freddie Freeman's full pull will be Dave Walsh in the Irish Challenger. Once again, he is using the 640 cubic inch Arius engine. Green apparently is not unlucky in his racing stable. And no, neither is it for his brother Dan, who is a two-wheel drive puller, the Irish Challenger, which is also green. Can he pull it out of here? No, he comes up short. 
about uh, eight to ten feet short, as a matter of fact. He needed the full pull, and he went 181.75. Well, he should be happy with the run, even though it wasn't a full pull, because it was a picture-perfect run. Started off good at the beginning, and he didn't seem to go as far to the left-hand side as a lot of these guys have been doing all night. He carried his front end just right, just about a foot and a half above the ground. Right there, he's got all the weight on that tractor, and it starts to pull him to the left a little bit, but I don't believe he had to hit them brakes at all. Well, that pull was good for third position for Dave. Let's go down and check in with Army. We're getting a 181.75, one one-hundredth of a foot, put you in the number three spot. Uh, right now, the starting line is sort of going away. I'm uh, going to better be earlier in class, but there ain't nothing to do about it now. What about the finish line? You got right down to the end, and it looks like the vehicle actually sunk in the dirt. What happened, the track is getting so soft down here from all the roots, and it's just getting softer and softer every, after every tractor pulls. Well, as you hear Dave say, the track is going away. That could be very good news for Freddie Freeman with the full pull. Paul Norman is now second with the War Wagon. And the Irish challenger of Dave Walsh is now third. The gold leaf dome of the state capitol building reflecting the sunshine from a clear Atlanta sky as our competition continues here in the Omni. We have two more polls. Tim Engler coming up next in Mission Impossible out of Princeton, Indiana. His family, Rich, is involved in building these tractors. Exactly, Gary. The Engler chassis are underneath probably 60% of these tractors. Comes up very short, Rich. 156.77. I know he will not be pleased with that run. Tim Engler from Princeton, Indiana. That's in southern Indiana. He has four Chevrolet engines, and they are mounted face to face. Exactly. Now I'm not sure. I think he had some problems early, and he knew it because he didn't get them engines wide open at all. Right there, he started to, and then he started to let out of it. I think he was just doing a little slipping and sliding and thought, hey, I can't get a full pull. I ain't going to blow no engines. Well, a full pull is exactly what it will take to at least go into a pull-off with Freddie Freeman. And the last puller with a shot, John Heilman out of Rockford, Ohio in Ohio Gold. Once again, he needs a full pull. And if he cannot make a full pull, the championship goes to Freddie Freeman. He's getting close, Rich. He's going to be a little short, Gary. Oh, 183.02. Just under seven feet short. And that means that Freddie Freeman out of Wadesville, Indiana, in the mean misreader, will take the victory as we watch the replay on John Heilman's pole. As you notice, he started way over in the right-hand side where Norman did, and look where he ends up, all the way on the left-hand side. John, how come Fred Freeman had this field covered today? Well, Fred came out of the hole real hard. He pulled a normal Fred Freeman fast. Freddie, you know, just thumped it right in the hole. We tried to duplicate it. I don't know how we finished that 183. I'm not sure where that puts us. But too many guys drove too conservative. I did it last night, but today I got after it. And that's how Freddie covered the field. Indeed, Freddie covered the field. He's standing by with Rich Hooser. Well, Gary, I got our winner here. Fast Freddie Freeman with a full pull. Now, I talked to uh, Mike earlier, and uh, he said you guys were doing a little weight moving around over there, but he wouldn't tell me what. But whatever you guys did, it was great. What did you, how was the run to you? It was a perfect run to me, Rich. I don't think I could have did anything any different for any better run than that. And I got to thank Mike for, he's my coach. He's my new coach now. And uh, the combination seems to be working pretty good. And I was due a win. I can't remember the last time I won a TNT pull. It must have been a couple years ago. And I really enjoyed coming out here and beating these guys today because they whoop up on me all the time. Let's take another look at the winning pull for Freddie Freeman out of Wadesville, Indiana, the mean nest breeder. It was a full pull, and that's what it took to win here in the Omni here today. So Freddie Freeman takes the victory with the full pull in the mean nest breeder. Paul Norman's war wagon was second, his pull 188.78, and John Heilman was third in Ohio gold at 183.02. Our congratulations to Freddie Freeman on his victory here in the Omni. For Rich Hooser and Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power.